Hey, this is Olivia Perriot with WiretapMusic.com. This month's feature band is Bonfire Madigan. I've known Madigan for, well, I met her when I was 19, so I've known her for a while. <laughs> um, and I was just a sprightly little kid when I first met her, and she was this um, like really cool punk rock cellist. Um, and I totally admired her and thought she was amazing. And then, um, like, we just crossed paths here in San Francisco again, and I was like, I, I've got to do a feature on her. She's so amazing. She's still doing it, and she's still, like, going strong and is just, like, an incredible artist. And so um, I couldn't help myself but to obviously feature her on the site. So here's a video for you to check out how amazing Bonfire Madigan is. How have you transformed personally as an activist? Because to me, like since I've known you, you've mm -hmm. always been, and when I hear about your history, you've been an activist. So, mm -hmm. how have you? How has that transformation happened? And also, have you have you seen it affect your music? Really early when I started doing this, you know, Riot Girl was what was happening mm -hmm. like, in reaction to hardcore and grunge and this, you know, overthrow cock rock and idolize your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. That was our creed. I started this series called I Won't Be Silent where women's voices were prioritized. We hadn't heard of anything like that happening since the 1970s, mm. you know, and this is 1990s Pacific Northwest, and here's all these young women going, where are our voices in this community? So we had to create the venues. We mm. had to create the festivals. If, and if you want to be at the festival, you're going to work and be a part of it. Yes, that was and continues to be a powerful route, and how I do that and with who continues to evolve, and at this point, really, all, all over the world. What uh, other projects and what are other things that you do besides Be Mad? The other big project I'm working on is The Icarus Project. Mm -hmm. The Icarus Project mm -hmm. <laughs> um, And The Icarus Project is a grassroots, peer-led, radical mental health community center, online um, activist support no network. It's also, it's a harm reduction project. Um, it's a part of the Mad Pride movement. What was one of the motivating factors that made you interested in starting the project with these mm. people? Like, what, what got you into it? Well, I mean, a lot of, again, personal life events, family history. I wrote about this actually quite a bit in a book that's just come out, mm -hmm. the Live Through This book, that's seven stories. And I talk about my own journey with madness, but needing to reclaim madness as not just a diseased, negative thing because mm -hmm. as an artist and performer, a composer, a compassionate, sensitive creature, mm -hmm. I also realized that the extreme depression and the mood extremes, extreme states of consciousness that were indicative of just my emotional journey were also what made my music possible. Right. And to me that was is the healing center of mm -hmm. my experience. Some really pivotal events happened. Um, one was the first time in a long time I was dealing with suicidal despair in a very real way mm -hmm. and I needed more help. But I needed help from people who had lived through it. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know where to go and find those people. I was doing some mental health activism but nobody was quite talking to each other that way because mm -hmm. the policing around these experiences, the shame we hold, yeah. it's too much to yeah. talk about it. And so the Icarus Project was really me with other people who've experienced these things going, let's have community around mm -hmm. this and talk to each other and have a peer-led um, 
point of view. And I have so much less shame. I can. T I never would have even a few years ago really talked about um, being labeled with manic depression mm -hmm. or yeah. shifts it from disease and shame and disorder into what we Something call powerful, possibly. Yeah, dangerous gifts. Dangerous we gifts. We call drawing on our mad gifts. The song is in the book, Live Through This. I love that. So you to me are definitely a motivated, strong, um, like, you know, driven person with, you know, what you do, your beliefs, your work and everything. But I can sense there's like a silliness in you too. There's a silly side. Like you're not, oh, you can't always be like that, you know? <laughs> so um, <laughs> what, uh, totally. what brings you to your silly place? Um, I think people would be surprised to know like what an actual, like really strange, dry, dark, extreme sense of humor I actually have. I love that famous quote, maybe it was Carol Burnett or somebody mm -hmm. like this, she said, um, all, all comedy is is tragedy plus time. Right. Uh-huh. It <laughs> is. That's true. I've had a lot of tragedy in my life, uh -huh. and I've also had time. I mean, and I'm also one of those people who, you know, will go to the beach, and I'm one of the first ones to throw my clothes off and run in the ocean, you uh -huh. know? So uh -huh. I, there's that part of me, and people close mm -hmm. to me know that I'm, I'm usually the zany daredevil if I'm given a chance, uh -huh. you know? Totally. And sometimes I think part of mental health is like impulse control. Uh -huh. <laughs> because uh -huh. the things that get us called crazy uh -huh. are often just our desire in the context of what's appropriate or not. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's like a moral compass and right. I actually enjoy flirting with that. Uh -huh. and every day has to be kind of a living art project day for me and that's fun. She's the deadliest, I'm 